September 20th, 1958, was an emblematic day for the British. At the RAF Syrston Air Base in Nottinghamshire, a crowd had gathered to watch the Battle of Britain air show. With many wounds still fresh from World War II, veterans were proud to see the protectors of the skies flying over them. Everything was running smoothly until the RAF's newest addition showed up to astonish the citizens, the Vulcan Bomber. Then all hell broke loose. First, little pieces of what looked like white confetti came out of the aircraft's wing. Next came flames, a sound of thunder, and smoke billowing over the airfield. A crash had happened in the middle of the show. On September 20th, 1958, the V-6770, the first prototype of the Vulcan, had instructions to conduct a performance test for its newest addition, a pair of Conway engines. This prototype had swapped the standard Sapphires and Avons for Rolls-Royce Conway power plants. The crew consisted of three Rolls-Royce employees, Captain Sturt, Second Pilot Ford, Flight Engineer Hopkins, and the Navigator Lieutenant Parrott, an RAF member. On the day of the accident, the VX-770 was flying from the Rolls-Royce airfield at Hucknall. If there was extra time after the flight test, the crew was instructed to fly past the Syrison Air Base for the Battle of Britain air show. No member of the crew knew that none of them would ever be able to commemorate another victory parade. At about 12.46, Captain Sturt called Hucknell for clearance to do a low pass on runway 9. After approval, he then turned for Syrston with an estimated arrival of 12.55. The captain was briefed for his pass over the air show by Mr. Hayworth, Rolls-Royce chief test pilot. He was instructed to perform two runs at the air show. The first pass would be at 200 feet, and the second at 300. Both would be done at 250 and 300 knots with 80% engine power. Captain Sturt would repeat one of the maneuvers he had done days before at the Farnborough Air Display on September 7, 1958. At 12.55, the VX-770 approached the airfield from the west. According to the instructions, the aircraft began the first pass at 250 feet. The Vulcan was filmed by a spectator as it passed the control tower, getting ready to perform a roll. As the aircraft did so, a kink appeared in the starboard wing's leading edge, and it began to break up. After a quarter of a second, the wing was covered by a cloud of fuel vapor. Then the starboard wing tip completely broke off, followed by a general collapse of the main spar and the wing structure between the spars. Almost a second later, the entire vehicle got covered by smoke and a burst of flames. After a quick glance at the crowd, the film depicts the aircraft one last time with its nose pointing almost straight down. It continued losing altitude until it finally hit the ground at the far end of the runway. An ominous cloud of smoke grew as every second passed. The audience gathered for the air show went utterly silent. Only the sirens and alarms accompanied the suffocating air of the runway. In the crash, the Vulcan's wing destroyed a rescue Land Rover parked nearby. The four crew members perished, alongside the three RAF servicemen from the rescue team. From the first indication of structural failure to the time of the crash, a mere six seconds passed. It was a fast and brutal tragedy that ruined the happy ambiance of the crowd. The wreckage trail extended over 1,400 yards. The body of one of the air crew smashed through the perimeter and was burning in the field. The rest of the remains from the crew were scattered across the area. After a thorough inspection of the wreckage, it was confirmed that the primary cause of the accident was a structural failure of the starboard main plane. Amateur films from the crowd and photographers taken at the time of the accident corroborated the cause. It was also suggested by an accident investigator called in by Rolls-Royce that another cause was that the pilot, at the time of the aerobatic display, exceeded the prototype's briefed speed and turning rate limits. The truth will never be known. In April 1960, the Royal Aircraft Establishment carried out an analysis of the wreckage. It produced a report, but no copy has been found to this day.